Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. Yep, this is Trip Trouble part 6 or 5? Uh, I don't know, I actually lost count. But we're here back again because, yeah, I wanted to finish this as soon as possible, the Trip of Trouble. There is actually getting a very, very interesting. I'm, I'm actually loving it, this series so far. Uh, yeah, you, you know what, let's... Uh, jump right to it because I don't want to waste any of your time guys. So yeah, let's do it uh, These bugs are getting on my nerves I close my eyes to gather a semblance of a thought When did things start to go wrong in this crappy project? Oh, yeah That was the last time uh, We saw it uh, happen because um, Sayori was actually is this uh, one one uh, I, I can't speak. Sayori told um, his parents about the Natsuki and him situation about all of that, and well, MC got kind of mad, but Sayori just one uh, to tell the truth about this because this is actually uh, kind of effed up if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's continue. I I don't remember it being so complicated. Hey, Dillweed. Oh, God. And he's here, too. What do you want, Cole? Easy now, bro. I ain't here to pick a fight. Hey, you look like a freaking Goku. You look like a fake Goku trying to be a Goku. Uh, hi, fake Goku. Good, because you lo you'll lose. He leans over my chair, sweating a non consensual look at my coat. Attempted to elbow him to a relieve some of my frustration, but I'd rather not deal with any issues in the administration. No need to risk college acceptances over bottom of the barrel trash. Your code seem hella complicated, are you sure there's nothing wrong here? You can read this? I'm in the class, bruh. Of course I can. I'm surprised. I thought you copied off of Natsuki who copied off of me. Bruh. Don't act all high and madly. You're the one talking a junior teach classes senior. Can I punch him? I really want to punch him. Yeah, you can, you know. Uh, I don't I don't like people thinking they are Goku. Call. What are you doing? Nasuke walks into the computer lab, finally back from her elongated bathroom bash. He's gonna punch you in the face if you keep that up. Hey, will I be scared of this guy? Cause he's bigger than you. Yeah, because I will punch you. He would. No, he wouldn't. I turned my head to face the small excuse of a boy that he is. Wanna bet? We look eyes and he tries his hardest to seem tough in the face of my admittedly crap eating green. His eyes had this harsh edge that if he were a bigger man, maybe into Intimidated me. Alas, he is not a bigger man in uh, in only a few seconds of facing my own own wavering glare. Carl looks away. He backs off slowly, sniffling with his tail between his legs. Ducking caveman. Is that racist? It has to be racist. It has to be. Relax, Carl. Look. I got you something. What? You gonna give some gully crab or whatever? Nat pulls something made of treat off her desk and sticks her hand out towards Carl. Carl's eyes l lose the harsh edge they had just moments ago. What's this? An airy Christmas gift. Dumbfounded, he. Uh, dumbfounded. He takes said Christmas gift and fumbles it around his wrist. He stares at it for a moment. Seemingly taken aback by its mere existence. Existence? Oh. Do you like it? Y yeah, thanks. I, I didn't. His tumbling air over his words would be adorable if it wasn't for his extremely punchable face. Thanks, Ned. No problem. Uh. I don't know what to. Uh. Funny boy. <laughs> Who ya calling funny boy? You, no, head out. 
Carl walks back to his seat without even acknowledging me. He sits down well, letting the warm light of his screen sit on his face. A smurry grin occupied most of it. Not an I share a look. Sh share a look. As I try to mentally ask her what the hell that was all about. In response, she leans over my chair and sneaks a peek on my cheeks. The smooth of her lips surprises me and restarts my ingenuous bringing me back to life. Damn, you're going to kiss him like that out of nowhere? Damn. Wow, what was that for? Just a little something something. Well, thanks, I liked it. I'm the queen of tanks today, apparently. What was that thing you gave Carl? She pulls out the empty roller chair next to me and she pushes herself to her previous desk, grabbing her stuff and excitedly rowing back to me. When I throw two of the plastic box in her hand, the, the lid bumps open revealing a hint of loose yarn. Dang, a whole lot of none of your business. Okay, those are your Christmas presents, I'm guessing. I refocus my intention on the screen, giving Ned the, the time to come up with some smart method. Using my trusty scroll wheel, I reach the top of my script. It's funny how much simpler and more organized my coding is here. Hey, they, they are on Christmas presents, actually. Then, what are they? None of your business. She starts taking out pieces of yarn and a piece of cardboard with tiny little holes in it. In the corner of my eye, I see Nat sliding some pieces of yarn into those holes. While interested in what she seems to be doing, I instead start typing away my fixes, trying my best to fill the holes in my code. Just tell me that. Fine. I'm making gifts for the most important people in my life. The perfect girls cast in fictional, they can accept gifts. A flick to the head quickly punched me back in my place. It also gives me a nice idea for a bug fix. You're a jerk. My finger stops on on the a key, multiply a multiplies of the letter feel, feeling of failing failing the line I'm on. So I've heard. I'm making I'm making one for Kazuya, one for Carl, and one for you. My finger lives of the key. Baffled at the odd list of people. Carl? Yeah, he's my friend. I cooked eyebrow and star all I can muster as a response to that statement. I see. I turn my attention back to my monitor, deleting all of the super floors in Kazuya. Oh, he got his ear today. Is that why it took you so long to come back? Ah, uh, well, I did have to take the Bit stop in the bathroom. I just kind of got lost scrolling through the news while I was on the pooper, and then my legs got numb. It was fun. That's so hot, Nat. Thanks for telling me about your funny time on the pooper. What? Are you turned on, Mr. Marco? Hey, yo, Nat. I'm. I'm not. I'm not, the main character is, don't look at me, I'm not. Her hand starts reaching for already shuttered ter territories, but I sweat it away. You're no fun. Midterms are around the corner. Nat, you should probably finish up this project instead of focusing on some gifts. Uh huh, as if you're not totally excited for my some gifts. I'm not totally excited to fix my bugs. I am not totally excited for some loose yarn. It's not gonna be loose yarn when it's done. All of it will treat into place nicely and will be amazing. Nasuki certified Karen, uh, Karen T. Yeah. Typing the last line of a code of my possible fix, I run the program and it's a success. Hey, is that your project for the midterm? Yep, I just got it to work. Is it finished? No, there's still a bunch of crap I have to deal with, but it better boots. Progress. See, giggles sweetly at my success. I can see still uh, Natsuki's hair. I can see uh, her hair a bit in there. <laughs> it touched my heart in the way a uh, hand corn even dream. So, 
When am I getting my loose yarn nut? Soon. It's not loose yarn. How soon is soon? I'm putting the finishing touches on it. Oh well, I'm not excited to see the finished product. We'll see about that. Her smile is so infectious that I can't help but smile along with her. She rolls aimless, uh, aimlessly around my desk and I finally I look away from my computer and answer her call for attention. What's up, Nat? I was wondering how things were going with you and Asayori. I haven't had a chance to talk to her in a bit, so... I haven't talked to her since what happened. She gently tosses my hand that's placed thoughtlessly uh, by the computer. You should try to. Maybe. Thanks for caring. Don't make a thing of it. I'm just doing this because I don't want you to look like a sad, ugly dummy. Thanks for not wanting me to look like that. <laughs> You're welcome. Alright, let me make sure that I save my program so I don't lose my progress. Huh? Oh damn. The, the lights went out. What happened? Nancy grips onto me tightly while I try to make out of her seal hooded in the dark room. What are you doing? It's dark, and you're dark. I don't want to lose you. <laughs> okay, no. That. That was racist. <laughs> yes, that was. It looks like the power's gone out. Stay put for now, everyone. I wonder how long this is going to last. What now? Oh god, Monica Pierce. Hey, Monica, long time no see. Uh, how have you been? You, you don't seem happy. <laughs> The door opens and reveals a very stressed Monica, striding her way into the room. Hello everyone, Delphi sent me here to inform everyone that the whole school is suffering from a blackout that will most likely last the entire day. Monica, I love you. <laughs> who, the f who the hell is Shinji? Shinji. Love you too, guy. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Students are to report to their next period class, however, all school activities are postponed until further notice. That is all. Peons, I must now spread the message to the other peons. It's fitting that the office got Mr. Perfect to be their little messenger. Okay, she, she's gone, alright. Uh, I'll see you never. Monica leaves the class, leaving a quiet door cl click in her wake. Even though we can't see much, I can feel us staring at each other in silence. The whole class er uh, erupts in the raucous or versus I don't know how to pronounce that. Kakopofi. What? Kakopony. Can't say I blame them since we've been given free day of school. Settle down, everyone. Even if school activities are. Pushed pardon, we are still in the institu institution of learning. I expect you all to be on your best behavior. Turning my attention back to that, I see she's starting to put her stuff away. Looks like I won't be able to get this done now. Crossing my arms, I lean back in my seat upon hearing her, her say this. Oh, are you upset, little one? I'm bigger than you. A condescending pinch to the cheek fills me both with annoyance and joy. Cheer up, uh, funny web. <laughs> You'll get yours at the end of the day. Stop talking to me like you're my mother. Your mom calls you... <laughs> In light of recent events? Yes. She pats my shoulder, trying to confront me and apologizing in one misly guess her. The other students start making their way out of the computer lab to spread their vigor across the whole school. Guess we better make our way out of here too, huh? See, not as I modestly gather up my things in short order. I hope I'll be able to work things out with that code in the future. You're not? The little wizard starts up to us in his own awkward way. Winnie Hibbs pulled out as if he stuck in a perpetually trusting motion. <sighs> what is it, Carl? I wanted to talk to you about something. Have a moment? 
Um, isn't there like a trash can you have to have a family meeting mean or something? Get better comebacks, mother trucker. <laughs> so Nat. I looked down on Nat with questioning eyes, wondering if she turned him down. Her rosy eyes don't even make contact with mine. She elects to answer both questions with one response. Fine, I'll hear you out, dude. Sweet. I'll see you later, Marco. The way she rubs my arm after saying that gives me a sense of assurance in this an odd occurrence. Alright, Nat. With that, I see Carl happily take Nat away into the dark recess of the school. Guess I better make my way to the next period. Okie dokie. Well then, Carl is a dumb funny. <laughs> Crazy to see how everyone acts when school suddenly gets shut down. Some people are just standing around talking to each other about stuff I don't care about. The underclassmen are running around the halls like it's... <laughs> oh god. At this point, I don't even know if going to second period is worth it. As I around the corner, to reach the classroom door, I catch a glimpse of something that fills me with dread. I fall on Sayuri scrolling through her phone as she leans against the wall. Uh oh, Sayuri's there. I feel a uh, concussion of uh, guilt and anger co collecting my throat as memories come floating back. We barely look each other in the eye anymore. Club meetings haven't been a lot of fun either. Each one is almost as dead as our relationships. At least not made things more bearable. I want to put all of all of this behind us. Swallowing the load in my throat and purpose, I work over to Sayuri. Hey there. Oh, hey Marco. I'm kind of surprised to see you out of your class. Class was cancelled, at least for me anyway. The DC kind of saw no point. Oh, that makes sense. Sayuri hasn't even bothered to look up, look up from her phone yet. Her uncannily cold eyes are more interested in whatever's on her screen than me in my words. It already feels unbearable having to do this, but she isn't helping my cause. I may as well get it over with. Look, sorry, I want to talk about what happened a month ago. Okay. Sorry, finally looks up at me. Her face has a pre apprehension written all over it. What about what happened a month ago, Marco? Every day. Something most gotten true to her because the edge on her face begins to dull. I don't like what's been going on here. This rift we have between us. There's some things I want to talk about and get off of my chest. Well, I'm listening. I want to... Oh my god. <laughs> god damn it. Before I can even answer her, my phone begins to violently ring in my pocket. The time it couldn't be any more inconvenient, it's like something's out for me. I slip my phone from my pocket and to reveal this mystery color. Huh. Who is it? It's Yuri. Whatever. She can't wait. Oh, it's alright, Marco. Take it. She probably wants to talk to you about something more important than me. Before I can even think of a response to that, Jesus turns around and begins walking away. See you around. I try reaching for her, but my hand is occupied by my phone. This phone call, call better be worth the trouble. Wordlessly, I quickly answer and, and address the person on the other side. What is it, Yuri? Hello there, Marco. Are you alright? By any chance? You sound ready tense. I have a lot going on at the moment, it's whatever. So, to what do I owe this pleasure? I actually called to deliver some good news for you. Oh yeah? What would that be? As Yuri begins to walk, I start hearing no, uh, murmurs of virus students entering the hallway. I swear I see Natsuki and Carl walking by, but the view is obstructed by the groups of students walking to the next period classes. I swiftly uh, duck into a quieter section of the corridor to hopefully resume the call with Yuri. 
So that's quite good as well. Hey Siri, hey, sorry Yuri, I had to move simple as L so I can hear you better. Okay, so my Siri, Siri just, just respond to me. I accidentally talked to you Siri. I was freaking reading this, okay? Shush. Uh, yeah. Think you can repeat what you said? Oh, of course, Marco. I was saying that I recently got an in in entry level position in the university's the department of Admis. Admission. Adm My specific rule is to ensure people's uh, acceptance package are sent to their proper recipients. Recipients, rare. Oh my god, those fancy words, why? Oh wow, Yuri, that's really amazing to hear. I wouldn't have expected the quiet book room to take on this an active, important role. Well, you know what they say, Marco? Never judge a book by its cover. Yes, yes, Darman. Yes, Darman. Yuri is very cute, yet mature giggle on the other end of the line reaches me. It's quite endearing. Anyway, as a member of the department of the admissions, and you're very good friend, I asked them if I could pers personally deliver this news. What news? It's my pleasure to say that you've been accepted, Marco. You'll receive your official package in the mail, but I just wanted to say congratulations. The world along when Yuri's voice begins to fade away upon hearing the news Caesar gave me. I can't believe it, I did it. Good job, good job me, good job, you did a good job. Everything I worked for, all the stress I've put myself under, on the sleepless nights, it's, it all culminated into this. This feels, this feels entirely anticlimactic. That's great Yuri, thanks. Marco, I'm now wanting to be very public with my emotions, but even I was a little bit more excited than you are when I received my accept acceptance. Sorry, this is amazing, but uh, is something the matter? The view, the view to the hallway is cr crowded with people, but that's why I can see a silver of silver of pink peeking through in all this stuff. I don't have much time, but if you like to confide in me. I swear I won't tell. I think about it for a moment. I haven't been able to confide in anyone since since a month ago. I don't know, Yuri. It's just I have no reason to tell anyone. I gulp. Okay, so about like three months ago, me and Atsuki. Oh my god, okay, go. Wait, I didn't skip that. He didn't sort of. Natsuki becomes a person on the ground in my house, so that means fooling around is- Oh my god, and her dad's like the gum you scrap off the Yuri's stage. I'm not skipping this. Okay, chill. Oh my god, okay, damn, it is going. I'm talking to you, there's some gift, I guess, I don't know. You probably didn't cut all that, do you want me to repeat it? No, I cut it all, thank you. So? She hums and murmurs to herself, probably thinking up some sage wisdom to imprint on me. I never expect Natsuki to be so... Promis promiscuous and blandly so at that. A lot can change in a year, I guess. And Marco, I didn't expect you to be such a willing pr pre- Wait, participant. It's good crab, okay? Was it true only about the crab, Marco? Why does everyone ask me that? Because of the Monica incident and the Sayori incident. You're not exactly a tra traditional ladies. Man, the same way Natsuki is not a traditional nymphomatic. So much has changed since I've been gone. Yeah, yeah. I hold my head in my hands, trying to avoid remembering the good old days of the tea and cupcakes. Have you tried confronting Natsuki about all this? I don't want to risk our relationship. Calling it a relationship is generous. There needs to be a love there. You don't think there is? Maybe on your end. 
my fellow Sanders, even without a front row seat, it seems Yuri has gotten the same handle on the situation as everyone else. If only I could tuck some sense into her, your eyes did somehow make her red thing tanks. Anyone can if you just comfort her about how she is treating you and about how you feel. I get the message. I talked to her, Marco. Maybe then you'll actually make some progress. Alright, I'll try. Good, congratulations on your acceptance. Thank you, Yuri. If you'd like to keep uh, keep me on, on the figurative too while I said my uh, literature, I would not mind. You are always the nosy tire, aren't you? Foo 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 foo. Goodbye, Marco. See you later. Hmm, what a news. She gives a quiet giggle as I hang up the phone. That was a good call. The shackles on my heart loosen, restoring my breath. Overall, it's a good news day. I'm betting two of a uh, two for three today when college acceptance and the school wide blackout. Natsuki and I are okay, even if things with her seems a little sus suspect. Yet, when all this good rumors still cloud my thoughts, please, guy. Guys, don't vape in the bathrooms, it's not good for you. The high pitched voice of a girl trying to her harness to sound somewhat demanding catches my attention. Maybe I can go for a third, hopefully, I don't strike out. Hello, Miss Ayuri. Hey, you knew. You knew. I don't know how to spell that. Keep vaping and I'll tell everyone about your three. three inches. Oh my god, I have no shame. I will tell the entire school without a second thought. And trust me, me the way you guys look. Do you believe me? Damn, Monica. The freshman boys shamefully walk away from the bathroom, each of them putting their little vape pants into their matching baggy cargo pants. One of them dares to make eye contact with Monica, but deeply regrets it. No man can help the smart in her eyes. Oh damn, Sayuri just jumped on me. How did you do that? Oh, Sayuri? Men may seem a poised terrorist, they may seem prideful, they may seem big, but their funnies is their greatest weakness, both psychically and mentally. Sayuri gulps in amazement, celebrating the new manhood of manipulation that was sadly is added to her ar arsenal. Hey guys, what's going on? The girls turn around to face me and I'm met with a disappointingly downcast Sayuri. Speaking of being controlled by his funny, was is trying to maintain a sense of order in the school. Did the principal put you up to this? She sure did. I'm getting some service hours out of it too. How about you? We take the good with the bad. Yeah, I heard about what happened between you and Sayuri. Imagine being that much of an idiot. No, seriously, imagine, because I can't. <laughs> I look over to Sayuri, who even now still has an uh, apologetic look in her eyes. Die in a fire, Monica. Only if you light it, you case nova. What's that supposed to mean? When how you and Natsuki have been acting, I thought you would know. So he turns white, her face immediately darting away from my vengeful stare. You told her to? I didn't, I swear. Or told me what? Holy crap, you and Suki are hooking up? <laughs> now Monica has realized it. This Suki really can't stay hidden. There's a joke there, but I'm more concerned with what Monica does with this information. But wait. <laughs> oh wow, she's so cheating on him with you? So any, any attempts as a privacy I know in my head. Why? Because I'm cute and stuff. Hmm, I see. I see it. Really? Yeah, you're cute. You agree, right, Sari? 
her red face serves to contrast her genuinely blue demeanor. Alright, you guys dated and are totally childhood best friends. Silly me, I forgot, especially with all this neg negative energy between you two. Monica, you know it's complicated. Monica's snark, uh, snarkiness that I only got used to recently res uh, A nostalgic expression of worry, characteristic of our club leader, shows itself once again. It never really is complicated. All you guys have to do is kiss and make up. Actually, I can't really kiss her. I can't kiss him either, and yeah. It's a figure of speech, dumb holes talking out. So your fingers win her hands, trying to find the right way to handle them. Monica stares at the two of us, fair friendly, waiting for either of us to take action. Wait, 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 they're going to do it? But, but, but what about Finn? Finn, the guy who's dating you, Sayori. He's gonna see you like this. Marco? No, no, let me. Sorry, I'm... Hey, Marco, I finally found you. Oh, for crap's sake. Oh, for crap's sake. What is it? We were having an ABC conversation. So how about you go get some D? Huh? What does that mean? I'm too smart for all of you, I swear. Natsuki walks over to me and pocketed my arm in front of a gawky crowd of our friends who do not care for her. Not, um, look, I need to talk to Sayori for a bit, okay? Sayori waves her hands repeatedly, trying to blow away the tension in the air. No, 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 You go talk to her. We'll talk later, Marco. Sayori, I said some. Hey, I'm not taking him away. I'll just tag along with you guys if you have important things to talk about. Wink. <laughs> now Sigur wings at me, patting my back. I nervously smile at the rest of our compatriots and gog their response. In the freak stroke of a coincidence, it seems that both Monica and Sayori roll their eyes in synths, I guess it's called. Now see, uh, cocks an eyebrow, well aware of their thoughts on her. I don't know, Natsuki. We kind of hate you. Morgan, that's not true, Nad. You're our friend. A kind of obvious, uh, obviously exhausted Nad walks up to her to glum matters in an attempt to try to make amends. I don't know what's up with you guys, but you're my literature club buddies. We've been through thick and thin together. That would mean something if you actually attended a meeting. I've been going to some crap, okay? Calling a man some crap is surprisingly ac accurate. Oh. Damn. That sticky eyes widen for a split second until Lizzie violently punched her in the face. Oh my god. They know? Yeah. This. Oh god. The struggle to maintain a sense of. Severely grows even tougher. Nasiga at first stands straight with their cold fist, ready to chew hell on her unsuspecting funnies. However, her entire posture changed as she reconsiders what to do next. Well then, time to lay everything on the table. I'm docking a couple of a couple of guys. Some don't know about each other. She slithers her way towards me and wraps my arm around hers, stopping any sense of me running away from this situation. Is there a problem with that? Monica looks over to a mostly baffled Sayuri, who is surprised that her friend has such a little shame. Mod multiple problems? But it seems that you don't care. I do care, but it's not my life, okay? I get it to make the decision I want to make. And I want this, okay? I feel good. Feeling good is I feel happy. Can you guys accept that? The situation has entirely left my control. I can do anything but stay silent. I look over to the this a silent Sayuri who, from the looks of it, has given up on this situation as well. Monica sighs, apparently reaching her limit. Fine, whatever. I accept. 
is no skin off my back. Sayori, you're the one that actually matters. What do you think? She frets us all, our eyes let on her. I can't help but sigh. Because unlike everyone else in this hellhole of a conversation, I know. Whatever, answer that comes out of her won't be honest. You're my best friend, Nat. I don't support what you do, but you're still my friend. Thanks, Sayori. Nat and Sayori... Wow, what was that big crack? Nat and Sayori going for a small, loose hug. Sayori looks over Nat's shoulder and sees... And sees me starting staring at her. Sayori returns to look, but can't maintain it for very long. She looks away and separate from Natsuki, wearing a weak smile on her face. Attend the meetings, Natsuki. Sure, I promise. Okay, you too, Mr. Quiet and Pathetic. Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to the wall. Sorry, of course, I'll attend the meetings. Good. In that case, it's water under the bridge. We all stand there awkwardly assessing each other's feelings. Anyway, I have some patrolling to do. You know, keep the peace and get my service hours. I could use some service hours. Better do, do start now than next year. I'm sure they will, will carry over. And I've got nothing better to do, so... Oh. Our ragtag group of dysfunctional idiots stand before our even more dysfunctional leader, each of us carrying nervous smiles and weak postures. One girl shrugs her shoulders, pitying the shell of our friend group. Okay, everyone, literature club. We're out, I guess. God, I miss Yuri. <laughs> Following the lead of the disgruntled Monica, we patrol the blank and chaotic hallways of our little school. Each corner has some sort of mischief going on. Whatever it's some freshmen vaping by the blackboards, feeling with the sense of unnerved bravery. Or couples finally making out, covered by the idiotic notion of if we can't see them, they can't see us. Natsuki and I look at each other and laugh, sometimes sometimes talking notes on the more convincing spots. All the while we break up these simple acts of unneeded rebellion, it's funny how all it took was the lights going out of everyone to start acting out their wildest fant fantasies. I can't say I don't understand the notion. Every couple of minutes, I try to approach Sayori and continue my attempts an apology, but every time I try, I'm reminding that. The moment has passed. We eventually run into Finn, eh, hey, my boy, who was part of the unlucky few taking a written test that wasn't interrupted by the blackout. Sayori so immediately jumps at the opportunity to leave and experience some level of joy away from all the drama and tension. In a weird way, I'm happy that she prioritized herself of my idiot action is better that way. Monica eventually ends up leaving as well, reporting our two whole service hours to the administration. When only the two of us left, I try to figure out what Natsuki wants to do for now. That's when Millie starts dragging me way into the large audience room, running away from the chaos of the school. Oh damn, okay. The audience room was oddly empty, which I chalk up to the fact that it's impossible, imp impossibly dark in here. The only light coming through was from the, under the aud auditorium door and from the emergency lights out sta on stage. We rushed to the stage, hoping to bath in some much needed light, much needed light. Funny, I can see Natsuki holding a look for intense guilt in her eyes. My imitated reaction is to try and figure out a way to absolve her of it. Yet, Yuri's words are ringing in my ear, telling me that. She sure feel guilty. I've been letting her get away with so much and it's, it has been entirely worth it. I still myself preparing to create a conflict that I don't want to start, but is a necessary evil. Not um, 
since I have you here and all that, we need to not... Oh, not supposed to into tears. Why well, start straight, unable to process what's going on. Either this is the quickest breakdown I've ever seen, or there's something I'm missing. I duck it up. I duck, duck. Huh? Glad I Why did I tell them all that? I'm an idiot. Oh, we're talking about what happened with the girls, right? That makes more sense. What is wrong with me? There isn't anything wrong with you. What are you talking about? The irony of me immediately caving into her tears after all that. Sitting up is not lost on me. I told the entire club I'm a swow. You're not a whoa. <laughs> kind of, you didn't mean to tell them that. Why would I want to tell them that? I don't know. You work in mysterious ways. I just put my faith in you. Now it's not the time to tell me about what you call your funny. I don't call my funny faith. Although, Marco. Sorry, sorry. I'm just very confused right now. What's going on? I ducked up with the club. I was trying to take control of the situation and I freaked up and told them about this and now they'll think I'm a big fat whoa <laughs> you're pretty s skinny so I don't think they think you're fat god shut the freak up why do I even talk to you because I'm cute and stuff her weeping becomes more noticeable and her head falls into her hands I don't know what I hate more this situation or the fact you're right Ned relax we just hang out with them. They don't think you're the worst yet. Yet? She cries even harder. Okay, okay. For the record, I'm not usually this lost. I know, I know. Well, this entire breakdown is boring. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't feeling as intense of catharsis from this. Seriously, not. It's okay. You did the right thing. You're just saying that to make me feel better. Yes, absolutely, but... Think of this way. They already thought you were um loose, but now they think you that you're doing at least on Garner's slightly more respect. Now Ziggy's weeping comes to a steady stop. She lifts her head up, showing me her redded cheeks and puffy eyes accentuated by this the streams of dry tears. I'm tired, Marco. Tired of what? Of feeling this way, feeling this way, feeling like I screwed up. I'm, I'm feeling with Kazuya. I'm f feeling with the club, and I felt it when you ghosted me. I keep feeling like I screwed up every time. If it makes you feel any better, I feel the same way. You do? Yeah, I screwed up. I screwed it up with Sayori. Mom hates me as much as Mom can hate her kid. Monica somehow respects me even less than before. Don't know how I manage that. And when I try to fix things, you feel like you make it worse. Pretty much. We both fall to the stage floor, giving up our attempts at being safe leagues people. Natsuki's r uh, remnant whimpers and my tired sighs are the only sounds one can hear. Her head turns to me. Pleading for my attention, I oblate. Her face looks less mess, uh, massacred by her wild emotions, yet I can still glean a sense of resolve from her. I'm sorry, Marco. All this stuff that's happened to you, it's my fault. I am just the worst. No, you're not. Stop, stop being so self-deprecating. It's not a good look on you. It's kind of scary, honestly. Tell me about it. Me being vulnerable? Hell's frozen over. The end times are approaching. See, see sneakers as we both enjoyed the sweet bit of liberty. It's not your fault. I made a choice. Sure, you can be kind of a... It's not mid words, you know, like you. So I hope you can't understand me saying this. You can be kind of over. Whoa, I'm your whoa, though, and Cassius, and that other guys. You mean Ryan? Who's Ryan? 
the other guy. Right. If it makes you feel any better, I'm not sure I... You're not sure you. She lifts up her knees and tucks her head in, trying to hide her face away. And honestly, puts a smile to my face, seeing her be more innocent than usual. I'm not sure I want to keep doing that anymore. What is that? Things just keep getting worse. I'm pretty sure Kazuya wants to break up with me. Yeah, that tracks. And I miss being with him and feeling okay with him, but I don't think I'm going to fight him on it. Why is that? She pulls her head out for her knees and leads onto my shoulder. Because there's only one person who I screwed up when sitting right next to me, making stupid, crappy jokes. Sounds like a great guy. <laughs> he is, but don't tell him I said that. I have a reputation to keep. You do? She lifts her head off my shoulder, ready to attack at the top of her head. But as Tava switch flipped in her head, she settles herself. She looks out aim aimlessly into a darkened room, almost like she's looking past me. You're right, I don't. I love you, Marco. Uh oh? Uh huh? You're a good guy. I feel safe with you. I like hanging out with you. And I've and I like docking with you. I love you. So oh, so that's a thing. I I have no idea what to say. I fantasized about this moment, but I thought it would never come. I've practiced I've practiced what to say in my head, so I may as well just Say it. I've said it before out loud. I can do this. I can tell her what needs to be said. I open my mouth, ready to spit out words dripping with courage. Neat. I'm leaving. No, wait, crap. <laughs> I was just being a, 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 stupid. What else is new? I love you too. Oh. <laughs> That's the right answer. Her greeting face sure filled me with happiness, but it's ring someone hollow. I've seen this face before, haven't I? No, wait. Oh god, if you say, what about Kazuya, I will sl yeah. Th do that to you. No, it's, do you love me? I said it, didn't I? No, I know you said that you love me, but do you love me or the fact that I'm still, still here after you screwed up? She looks away, her frustrated look telling me that I'm right. I celebrated too early and I know I made a fool of myself. At the very least, I've been here before thanks to Monica. I may be a bag short, but at the very least, I can probably get over this. Weirdly, she searches through her blazer's pockets until she pulls out a stitch to get a piece of yarn. She puts out her, her hand as if she's inviting me. Come on, give me your hand. You know, g g give me your hand. Sure. I put my hand in hers and she pulls it towards her light. She was trying to rip it away for herself. She rubs the piece of yarn around my wrist, trying it down to me. Um, is this? You were asking about your bracelet. Here it is. It's cool. I appreciate it, but you didn't really answer my question. Just look at it. Just look at it, will you? I intently ob observe the normal looking, but heartfelt bracelet trying to find something special in it. I don't get it. There's a pink in it, and none of others have pink in them. And do I really need to spell out the sim symbolism? What symbolism? Oh, wow. I've been meaning to tell you this for a while, Marco. They they were special to me, but she crawls up to me and firmly places her hands on my lap. Her weight pins me to the ground, and I can't help but stare in very dermant. They range you special. Oh, I had a crush on you a year ago, and the truth is, I never stopped. I did really talking stupid things, but in the end. I think it's worth it because I got the sense with you I always wanted. So yeah, I love you. 
even though I'm a big fat whoa in you shouldn't love me back. I love you. My hand finally releases itself from its suspended animation and steadily reaches for her flushed cheek. She leans into it, her eyes splitting with me to stay what she wants. I know this sounds hypocritical of me, but do you promise not to keep being a big, not so fat? Whoa! As long as you let me be yours, I promise. She rests her body onto me, wrapping her arms around my neck. I reciprocate the hug, enjoying the in enveloping feeling of warmth and safely. I'm sorry that I, su I sucked so much, Marco. You didn't suck. Her head burrows even deeper into my chest, giving her front row seats to my happily skipping heartbeat. A petting tree of tree of tree today, it's cause of celebration. I got accepted into university, by the way. Congrats, Marco. She pulls away from our hug and rests herself firmly on my lap. Didn't think they'd accept a dumb funny like you, but they did. Well, you accepted a dumb, dumb stupid like me. And now I'm dating a dumb stupid like you. Dating? Yeah. Now will you kiss me, you talking stupid? I don't know, it's pretty dark. No one's around. One again, the service squad probably won't find us here. Do you want to do something crazier than this kissing? Hey, oh, hold on. <laughs> This is kind of, you know, uh, you know, funny. I need to, I need to take a, you know, a pic of it because why not? Okay. There you go. Did I, did I took a picture? Two for my thumbnail, because I need this for my thumbnail. I didn't. Oh, I did. I did. Never mind. Anyway, let's continue. Hmm. This is a way for me. The print of her warm, fruitfully breath intoctrinates me as she pulls herself closer and closer to me. I'm listening. Okay, so they do the funny together thing. Damn. January 3rd, okay. Alright. I'm going to end the video right here. I've been recording for a while, I'd say. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Um, it was actually... I wasn't, I wasn't expecting um, Monica to find all of this, but it looks like all the club knows. But uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna say good job, Jay, as usual, good job with this, uh, yeah, see you guys in the next video, bye-bye.